Hey guys, Cloud here, and today we will be covering a distance calculation command that really just uses item displays and a little exploit of them. In the past, I've covered a distance calculation command that used scoreboards and the newton raphson method for a square root approximation, and it didn't work at long distances. This one has multiple digits of precision at any distance, and it works pretty much perfectly. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm not going to bore you with the details, but this was discovered by Triton365 on the Minecraft Commands Discord, which I'll leave a link for the uh, invite in the description maybe. Uh, but essentially what it does is it uses a exploit of the item modifiers with their matrix values to calculate the distance transform as the scale of the resulting item display. And so what this means is if we go into the misode github.io slash transformations website, which allows us to manipulate all these different things. We can change this, the translation of the block and the left rotation and all these fun stuff. We can go over here to the matrix tab. And one thing he discovered basically is because of the way that the transform works with the math, if you remove all these, so if I go here and I make this zero and I make this zero, and then anything on the first input here of X and the first input here of Y and the first input here of Z will result in the scale in the X direction being the square root of the sum of these values. So if I change this to two, we just get the sum of the squares of the square root. So we get two squared, square rooted is two. But if I change this back to one and I change this value to one, then we get one squared plus one squared square rooted, which is 1.414. So these are really cool little exploits you can do with the transform because there's a bunch of math going on to go from the matrix to the translation value when you input the value into the entity. So the way we actually perform this is we go to a fixed uh, item display with a known UUID for extra performance. And so now we don't need any selectors and we mess with its transformation, setting its transformation to a matrix value of X, Y, Z, and the result of scale transform of zero that happens after you apply this will be your square root uh, or your distance calculation or the sum of the squares square rooted. And so we can go ahead and do this in 2D or 3D or in 1D that's uh, irrelevant. So what we do is we pass a value of the input on a data storage of X, Y, and Z, and they all have to be floats. And then it will give us a value on the data storage of an output, which will be a float. And you can control the precision if you're moving this to a scoreboard or somewhere else. So to show you the example that I used in game, you can see that it says distance from zero, zero, zero. All I'm doing is I'm grabbing the positional coordinates of the player. So X, Y, and Z. Uh, and what it's doing is it's squaring those and then adding them and then square rooting them to give me this value of distance, Euclidean distance from zero, zero, zero. And to do that, it's straightforward. So we move the position onto in.x as a float. So we make sure that the value is a float. The reason we use execute store results is so we can do a type conversion. If we did a data modify, we would get doubles. Then we do the same to y and the same to z. And then we run the function with the storage of the input and then print it on the output right here. So pretty straightforward, you get a distance calculation. Now, if you're wondering performance compared to previous methods, I have a little bit of a test set up here. And so let me just comment all this out. And essentially what I've done is I have set up a test bench or a little testing scenario where what we're going to do is we're going to set the tries to 100 and run a different distance calculator. And then we are going to run our own distance calculator and see the difference in the MSPT and the little tick graph on the bottom right. So one thing to note on how I set up this test. So essentially what I did was for both of them, I assumed that the values that you want for DX, DY, and DZ are already stored on some score somewhere. So in this case, I set the scores. And in this case, I get the scores. But I did include this type conversion that will be necessary in order to use the current version. And I do say mine, but it's really Triton's. Um, but anyways, so I do the type conversions here too, just to give it a little bit more fairness, because you will have to do this type conversion if you are using this method. Uh, and so we're going to just run them both 100 times per tick. And so if I run this one 100 times per tick, you can see immediately there is a little bit of an issue, but then it evens out to a set uh, kind of value. And you can see how much that is. Uh, it's pretty dang high. 
Okay, so we'll let it stabilize a little bit, and that is our result for that one. Now I'm going to run it on this, which is ours, and then let it stabilize. And as you can see, the MSPT is a big difference, even though we're using macros. And this one is more precise than the other version to a higher number of decimal places since it's using Java floats. So in conclusion, this new distance method is a lot faster and provides a lot more uh, accuracy and precision, and it works at far distances. Now, I didn't do a test with a scoreboard method. This other method I tried was by Pork, uh, super, by SuperSword, and uh, it essentially uses sign and trig exploitations and teleporting an entity. So you can imagine it probably wouldn't be as good. And so hopefully we can find the optimal method for a new math data pack that I want to put together. But for now, this is the best method I could find. Anyways, if you thought that was useful, leave a like. Let me know what you want to see next in the description, and I will see you next time. Peace.